Hi everyone, uh, the title of my presentation today is The Role of Pharmacist in Optimizing Pharmacotherapy of Schizophrenia. Now, first of all, schizophrenia is classified as a mental disorder. You can see this uh, photo. Uh, a patient may look like that when suffering from schizophrenia and also they could have like odd behaviors. Now, in general, mental disorders are associated with morbidity and also with reduced productivity and also absence from work. Most patients have no jobs. They are unemployed and they have also a reduced quality of life. And also there will be an increased use of healthcare services by these patients. So look at this lady suffering from schizophrenia and what she's doing with her spaghetti. Uh, yeah, we expect that like they, they have mental disorders, so expect anything from them. Uh, there is actually an economic burden on the budget of the health authority. Like for example, in Canada in 2013, they spent approximately $51 billion for the management of patients with uh, mental disorders in general. Now, the onset of mental disorders start with adolescence and at an early adulthood. Now, if you look at here in Canada, uh, approximately 20% uh, of Can Canadians are suffering from mental disorders and about 2 to 4% they have bipolar disorder and approximately 1% of Canadians uh, are suffering from schizophrenia. Now, there are so many causes for uh, schizophrenia, uh, including the genetics, the family history. So if the father or the mother or the brother or the sister uh, had schizophrenia, there is a high risk with the other member of the families to have schizophrenia. And sometimes, as you know, you can see that the whole family members uh, having this problem, but there are exceptions. Sometimes some of the family members are perfectly healthy and they don't have any mental disorder. But the family history is actually an important risk factor. Uh, also, uh, schizophrenia could be due to abnormality in the neurohormonal system and possibly it could be due to some structural abnormalities in the brain and some people may develop schizophrenia due to stress and uh, the other cause of schizophrenia is a trauma, especially if the patient had like a car accident and uh, brain injury, uh, possibly this patient will end up with schizophrenia. Now, schizophrenia is associated with two kinds of symptoms, positive symptoms, and we have negative symptoms. So some patients may suffer from positive symptoms and other patients 
may suffer from negative symptoms and another group of patients they can suffer one time from positive symptom at another time they suffer from uh, negative symptoms and this is very important when we talk about a drug therapy and we need a drug therapy to manage either the positive symptoms or the negative symptoms so the negative symptoms include hallucination and there are different kinds of hallucination it could be visual people they see uh, objects which do not exist and some of them they have auditory uh, hallucination okay and uh, they hear sounds which do not exist and other people they don't hear and some also patients have delusions okay uh, look at this yeah, this is one of the images that a schizophrenic patient may imagine or may see okay while normal people uh, healthy people they do not see such image now the negative symptoms on the other hand include anhedonia avolition affective flattering allogia and decreased attention and we will discuss these we will just uh, define these terms so anhedonia means the patient does not enjoy any pleasurable activity and you remember when you talked about depression uh, the depressed people also suffer from anhedonia they don't like they don't enjoy food they don't enjoy exercise they don't enjoy sex uh, they don't enjoy any regular activity that people enjoy okay now the other uh, uh, positive uh, uh, the other symptoms or negative symptoms sorry is the avolition and here there is no lack of motivation the person is not more mo motivated he doesn't like to do anything okay and the other things the affective flattering which could be associated with either reduced or absent emotional response okay normal people healthy people they have emotions sometimes they are happy sometimes they are sad sometimes they laugh sometimes they cry while uh, people with this schizophrenia have reduced in the motion or their motions are completely absent they do not have any motion any emotion uh, another negative symptom we call it allogia poverty of speech okay uh, they cannot speak perfectly like the healthy people now usually schizophrenia is more common in men than in women and the ratio is 1.4 to 1 so if you have for uh, if you have 14 men with schizophrenia you have 10 women with schizophrenia now schizophrenia usually develops uh, at the age of 15 up to the age of 45 so between the ages of 15 and 45 we can see most of the cases of schizophrenia now here the diagnosis of schizophrenia uh, depends on diagnostic criteria so if the patient has at least two diagnostic criteria which are present for at least one month and they persist for at least six months 
the diagnosis of schizophrenia is confirmed. Now, what are the criteria for the diagnosis of schizophrenia? Hallucination, delusions, disorganized speech, negative symptoms, okay? Now, the treatment here, before we start with the treatment, what are our goals? What are our aims? So the first goal is to stabilize the acute illness if the patient is suffering from an acute attack of schizophrenia. Our aim, our first aim, our first goal is to stabilize his condition. And second, to prevent a relapse. And then we need to minimize the symptoms of schizophrenia, whether positive or negative symptoms. And also, we try our best to promote maximal functional ability for the patient. And also, we try our best to maximize adherence to medication. And this is actually a very difficult job for the family members and for the healthcare providers because these patients, they do not adhere, most of them. So the, here comes the role of the pharmacist by counseling, by follow-up with the patient, with the, his uh, uh, family members to make sure that the patient is complying with the therapy to make sure that he doesn't or she doesn't end up with another acute attack. And the other aim, we try our best to minimize the side effect or the adverse drug reaction of the medications that are used for treating schizophrenic patients. So the drugs that are used to treat uh, schizophrenia are called antipsychotics because in the past schizophrenia was known as psychosis and that's why the drugs here are called antipsychotics. So we have different classes of antipsychotics. We have the typical antipsychotics and they are also known first generation antipsychotics the old medication which uh, are still in use okay and are they still exist and the other drugs which are used more commonly nowadays include the atypical antipsychotics uh, including second generation antipsychotics and third generation antipsychotics. Now, if you look here at the second generation antipsychotics, okay, we have the generic name and the brand name and the uh, range of the dose. We have clozapine, which is known as clozaril, olanzapine, zyprexa and uh, polyperidone, known as Invega, and cutiapine, which is known as Seroquel. Also, we have other uh, uh, members in the second generation, like Risperidone, which is known as Risperidal, Zebracidone, which is known as Zeldox, uh, Acinapine, which is known as Safris, and Luracidone, which is known as Latuda. Now, let's start with the third generation antipsychotics, and then we will discuss the second generation. And at the end of the presentation, we will talk briefly about the phase generation or the typical uh, antipsychotics. Now, one of the popular medication in the third generation is Abilify, okay? Uh, still, we have no generic for Abilify in Canada. Uh, uh, we have the Aripiprazole, and we expect that the 
generic will be available sooner or later. And all the second generation uh, antipsychotic except eclozacine are considered as phase-line agents in the treatment of schizophrenia. So the psychiatrist, the uh, uh, family doctor, uh, he will choose uh, a second generation antipsychotic as a phased option for the management of a new patient with schizophrenia. But he will not think about uh, using clozapine or clozaril. We will talk about this later on. Now, usually the second generation uh, antipsychotics, they bind to the dopamine uh, type 2 receptors uh, and they can control the positive signs or the positive symptoms of schizophrenia like the hallucination and uh, uh, other uh, positive symptoms. Now, the second generation antipsychotics usually bind to the D2 receptors less firmly, loosely, compared to dopamine. And we call that hit and run. They hit the receptor and run away, okay? They do not continue binding to the D2 receptor. And the second generation antipsychotics, uh, they can induce significant improvement in the positive symptoms of schizophrenia. Also, the second generation antipsychotics bind the uh, serotonin receptor like 5-HT2A receptors and also they can improve the negative symptoms. So that's the advantage of the second generation antipsychotics. They can improve both the positive and negative symptoms of schizophrenia. Now, the atypical antipsychotics in general uh, can also interact with other receptors like D1, D2, D3, and D4, and this will lead to the development of side effects like dyskinesia, extra pyramidal symptoms, and hyperprolactinemia, or increase in the serum level of prolactin. Also, the atypical antipsychotics can bind uh, some uh, serotonin receptors uh, like 1A and 2A and 2C, and this will induce side effects like sedation, weight gain, and sexual dysfunction. Also, the atypical antipsychotics can interact with histamine type 1 receptor or H1 receptors, leading to somnolence, weight gain, and sedation. Also, the atypical antipsychotics may interact with alpha-1 and alpha-2 adrenergic receptors, and this could lead to orthostatic hypotension. Again, the atypical antipsychotics can interact with the muscarinic receptors, leading to anticholinergic side effects such as dry mouth, tachycardia, and urinary retention. Now, let's talk about the cognitive side effect of the atypical antipsychotics. Now, 
the second generation antipsychotics in general they cause less cognitive side effect compared to first generation antipsychotics uh, the sedation here is agent dependent some of them they cause mild sedation others cause moderate and others can cause severe sedation now the drowsiness and sedation for Invega or the Paliperidone is usually moderate, approximately more than 2% of patients are expected to develop a drowsiness and sedation when treated by Invega. Now, the sedation is usually worse during the titration of the dose, when we are increasing the dose, and also it is worse when the patient is on higher doses. Now, sometimes the sedation could either be transient, it develops at the beginning of the treatment, and sometimes it could persist, it is persistence. Now, if the atypical antipsychotics are used with other medications that may also decrease the cognition of course here we will have either synergistic or additive uh, sedation now the drowsiness and sedation or sedation uh, this is side effect this side effect is usually high and it occurs in more than 10 percent of the patients treated by uh, abilify and uh, acenaphine or latuda now the drowsiness is also high with risperidone and zebracidone and it's very high in patients treated with the clozapine, olanzapine, and cutiapine. Now let's talk about the extra pyramidal side effects. And again, the extra pyramidal side effects are more common with phase generation antipsychotics, and they are less common in second generation antipsychotics. Now, usually, uh, acute extrapyramidal symptoms may develop at the initiation of treatment, uh, either during the phase days of a treatment or possibly during the phase weeks of a treatment. So, the extrapyramidal symptoms include dystonia, Parkinsonism, and akathisia. Now, the agents that block the D2 receptors may induce tardive dyskinesia. And unfortunately, uh, tardive dyskinesia could be permanent and it could be irreversible. Now, the second generation antipsychotics may also cause a neurological side effects like a tremor, rigidity, akathisia, and the third generation antipsychotics are associated with a higher incidence of extra pyramidal side effect compared to the second generation. So here, the uh, least uh, uh, extra pyramidal side effect is expected to be with the second generation, and after that we have the uh, uh, third generation, and then the highest will be with the first generation antipsychotics.
Now, regarding acenaphine and the development of Parkinsonism, because this drug is still new, we do not have enough data about the incidence of Parkinsonism in patients treated with acenaphine. Now, the Parkinsonism is usually moderate in patients treated with clozapine, olanzapine, and cutiapine, and again, it's moderate in patients treated, treated with Abilify and Latuda, and also it is moderate in patients treated with uh, uh, Invega uh, or uh, uh, Ziprexa. Now, the Parkinsonism is expected to be very high and severe in patients treated with Risperidone. Now, again, we do not have enough data about akathisia in patients treated with acenaphine. Now, uh, akathisia is usually mild in patients treated with clozapine, and it is moderate in patients treated with uh, polypridone, ziprasidone, and cutiapine, and the incidence of akathisia is usually high in patients treated with Abilify and with Latuda. And also, akathisia side effect is high in patients treated with olanzapine and risperidone. Now, regarding the anticholinergic side effect, uh, loracidone is associated with mild anticholinergic side effect and approximately less than 2% of the patient treated with Latuda are expected to develop anticholinergic side effect. However, the anticholinergic side effects are moderate uh, in patients uh, treated with uh, Abilify uh, or with acenaphine. And again, uh, the anticholinergic side effects are moderate uh, in patient treated with Invega or Risperdal. However, the incidence of the anticholinergic side effect is expected to be high in patient treated with Olanzapine, Zibrasidone, or Syroquil. And the anticholinergic side effects are very high, or the highest, in patients treated with clozapine or clozaril. Now, let's talk about the endocrine and sexual side effect of the antipsychotics. Now, there, we don't have enough data about galacto, galactoria in patients treated with acenaphine. Okay, and also uh, Galactoria has not been reported in patients on cutiapine or Syroquil. However, Galactoria is usually moderate in patients treated with Abilify or Clazaril, and also moderate with patients treated with Latuda and Invega. And the incidence is high in patients treated with risperidone. Now, regarding the weight gain or the increase in the body weight, there is a mild uh, increase in the body weight in patients treated with Latuda. Less than 2% of the patients treated with Latuda are expected to have a gain in their weight. However, the weight gain is moderate in patients treated with uh, Abilify or Ziprasidone, and the weight gain is expected to be high in patients treated with acenaphine or in Vega. And also, 
the weight gain is high in patients treated with Seroquel or Risperidone. And also it is high in patients treated with Cotiapine and Risperidone. And it's very high in or the highest in patient treated with clozapine or olanzapine. Now, the glucose impairment. Now, usually the atypical antipsychotics may lead to insulin resistance and they may exacerbate type 1 diabetes and also they may induce type 2 diabetes and also they could be associated with diabetic ketoacidosis. Okay, so the last incidence of hyperglycemia is associated with Risperidone, uh, Latuda, Invega, and Abilify. And there is a moderate incidence of hyperglycemia in patients treated with Seroquel. And the highest incidence of hyperglycemia is expected in patients treated with the clozapine. We don't have enough data uh, about in Vega and hyperglycemia. Uh, hyperglycemia is expected to be mild in patients on Abilify or Latuda and moderate in patients on Ziprasidone and hyperglycemia is expected to be high in patients on acenaphine or risperidone and hyperglycemia is expected to be very high in more than 30% of the patient treated with olanzapine, clozapine and cutiapine. Now, the other side effect, dyslipidemia. Now, hyperlipidemia, uh, we do not have information about this side effect in patients treated with the Invega. And the hyperlipidemia is expected to be mild in patient on Abilify, Latuda, and Zibracidone, and it's expected to be high in patients treated with acenaphine, cotiapine, and risperidone, and it's expected to be the highest or very high in patients on clozapine or olanzapine. Now, let's talk about now the third generation antipsychotics. Okay, uh, we start with Abilify, okay, and chemically is known as Aripiprazole. This medication is used in the management of manic bipolar episode and to treat mixed bipolar episode. It can be used as a monotherapy or a co-therapy with lithium or divolprox. Now, the dose for Abilify as a co-therapy varies between 10 to 30 milligram daily, and also the dose for the treatment of schizophrenia is similar 10 to 30 milligram daily. Now, Abilify is not expected to cause an increase in body weight. However, Abilify could be associated with many side effects like the extra pyramidal symptoms, sedation, anxiety, and insomnia. Now, 
Abilify is metabolized by cytochrome P3A4 and 2D6. And therefore, we expect to have drug-drug interaction with the inducers of cytochrome 3A4, like carbamazepine and other agents. And also we expect a drug in drug interaction with the inhibitors of cytochrome uh, 2D6, like floxetine and paroxetine. Now, grapefruit. Grapefruit usually inhibits cytochrome P3A4, and it may decrease the metabolism of Abilify. Now, St. George's wort may induce cytochrome P3A4, and it may increase the metabolism of Abilify. Now, regarding the second generation antipsychotics, we have clozapine, and the trade name is Clozaril. Uh, this medication, or this antipsychotic, atypical antipsychotic, is used to treat resistant cases of schizophrenia that did not respond, or the patient did not tolerate at least two chemically unrelated antipsychotics. So this medication, clozapine, is not a phased option. We use it when the patient did not respond to at least two antipsychotic, or uh, the patient could not tolerate the side effect of at least two antipsychotics, then we think about using clozapine or clozaril. Now, clozapine is used to treat schizophrenia, and the initial dose is 12.5 milligram daily, and then we start slow titration till we reach the maximal dose, which is 600 milligram daily. Now, the problem with the clozapine, as you know, the effect on white blood cells, it can cause a granulocytosis, and this will lead to a significant decrease in the white blood cell count, and therefore it is essential to monitor the white blood cell count. Usually in the pharmacy, we do not release the prescription of a clozapine unless we see the blood work, okay? And when they do the blood work, they give you a green light that the patient can continue clozapine, but if the white blood, white blood cell count is low, they give you a red line, it means the patient has to stop the medication for a while until the white blood cell count is back to normal. So, again, clozapine can decrease the white blood cell count by inducing a granulocytosis or destruction in the granulocytes. And the clozapine is the drug of choice for certain patients, like patients who have suicidal behavior, patients who have a history of violence, patients who have a history of substance abuse. Now, the side effect of clozapine include uh, weight gain, sedation, hyperglycemia, and nocturnal enuresis, in addition to other side effects like myocarditis, seizures, postural hypotension, and hypersalivation. Now, again, there are drug drug interaction, uh, especially with the cytochrome P3A4 inducers like carbamazepine and other agents, and also with the inhibitors uh, of cytochrome P3A4 like erythromycin and other agents. And also we expect the drug drug interaction with the inducers of cytochrome uh, P1A2 
like omeprazole, marijuana, cigarette smoking, and other agents. We expect also drug-drug interaction with the inhibitors of cytochrome P1A2 like ciprofloxacin, norfloxacin, fluvoxamine, and other medications. Now, there is no drug interaction with the grapefruit, so people who use Clozeril can enjoy uh, drinking grapefruit or eat uh, drinking grapefruit juice or eating grapefruit. Now, St. Joe's wort may induce cytochrome P3A4, and this may increase the metabolism of clozapine. Okay, now we move next to risperidone, or they call it risperidal. And when we use this medication at a low to moderate dose, like between four to six milligram daily, the incidence of extra pyramidal side effect is expected to be low. Now, however, if we increase the dose of risperidone above six milligram daily, risperidone will lose its properties as a second generation antipsychotics and it will start acting as a first generation antipsychotics. So here we have selectivity. If we use it at low dose, the drug remains as second generation atypical antipsychotic. If the dose is above six milligram, it loses its atypical properties and becomes or acts like a phased generation or like typical antipsychotics. Okay, so for example, if the patient is on risperidone and we notice that the patient is not responding, what do we do? Uh, in other cases or other medication, they usually increase the dose, but here just the opposite. If the patient is not responding, we need to decrease the dose, okay? So that we get the atypical effects because at higher doses, the medication will act as typical antipsychotic and at lower doses, it will act as atypical and it will be more effective in other words, at lower doses than higher doses. Now, risperidone is available in different formulation, regular tablets, oral disintegrating tablets, and as injectable. Now, risperidone can be used as a monotherapy to treat acute cases of manic episodes, and also it can be used for the treatment uh, of acute uh, cases and also as a maintenance therapy for schizophrenia and other related psychotic disorders. So risperidone also can be used for short term and uh, it can be used as uh, uh, yeah, for short term symptomatic treatment for patients who have inappropriate behaviors like aggression, psychosis, or severe dementia. Now, the prolonged release injection of risperidone could be used as a monotherapy maintenance uh, treatment for bipolar disorder, for schizophrenia manifestation, and for other related psychotic disorders. Now, risperidone is used for the treatment of bipolar disorders at a dose of two to six milligram daily uh, by the regular tablet or the ODT. Now, risperidone also can be used as an injection 
uh, to treat bipolar disorders and the dose here is between 25 to 50 milligram every two weeks now risperidone uh, as tablets or oral disintegrating tablets can be used to treat schizophrenia in a dose between one to four milligram once to twice a day of course here we should not exceed six milligram because we will lose the atypical characteristic of this medication now risperidone also can be used as a prolonged release injection in the treatment of schizophrenia we mentioned this actually uh, and there are some drug drug interaction with the cytochrome p3a4 inducers and with the inhibitors of t 6 and the grapefruit also can inhibit cytochrome p3a4 and it may decrease the metabolism of risperidone and also st john's wort may induce cytochrome p3a4 leading to increased metabolism of risperidone now the side effect of risperidone include extra pyramidal symptoms hypotension hyperprolactinemia and weight gain now we move next to Invega and Invega is metabolized in the body to risperidone so it has an active metabolite okay and it is available as extended release tablet and as an injection now it is not recommended to use Invega and risperidone at the same time because Invega will be converted to risperidone. Now, Invega is used to treat schizophrenia and other related psychotic disorders. Now, Invega is used to treat schizophrenia by using oral tablets which have extended release or long acting, and usually it is given once daily. Uh, a dose with 3 milligram up to 12 milligram now in vega can be used uh, to treat schizophrenia uh, by using the prolonged release injection and here there is a recommended regimen on day one we inject 150 milligram on day eight we inject 100 milligram and then after that the maintenance dose will be 25 to 150 milligram to be injected intramuscularly every month now we have to take into consideration that divaloprox may increase the level of invega and the common side effect of Invega include extra pyramidal symptoms, hypotension, tachycardia, and weight gain. And again, uh, we move to olanzapine, or it is known as Zyprexa, which is available as tablets or a disintegrating tablet and injection. So Olanzapine can be used as a monotherapy or a co-therapy to, to treat acute bipolar 1 episodes, whether the episodes are manic or mixed. Also, olanzapine is used to treat schizophrenia uh, in the acute phase, it can be used for maintenance therapy and also to treat uh, other related psychotic disorders. Now, the intramuscular injection of alonzepine sometimes is, is used to achieve a rapid control of agitation in a patient suffering from schizophrenia, bipolar mania, or other related 
psychotic disorders. Again, olanzapine is available as regular tablet and as ODT, and it is recommended to treat acute mania in patient with bipolar disorder, uh, either as a monotherapy at a dose of 15 to 20 mg daily, or as a co-therapy at a dose between 10 to 20 mg daily. Now, olanzapine can be used to treat uh, schizophrenia uh, with tablets or ODT. We start with a dose of 5 mg daily, and then we increase the dose by 5 mg daily until we achieve the maximal dose, which is 20 mg per day. Now, the intramuscular injection of uh, olanzapine can be used to achieve rapid control of agitation in patients suffering from bipolar mania or schizophrenia, and the dose here varies between 20 to 60 mg every 24 hours. Now, it is very important that parenteral lorazepam should not be co-administered with intramuscular olanzapine because this combination can precipitate either respiratory arrest or cardiac arrest. Now, carbamazepine as an enzyme inducer can increase the metabolism of olanzapine and also expect a drug drug interaction with the cytochrome P1A2 inducers uh, and with the inhibitors. Now, the common side effect of olanzapine may include sedation, orthostatic hypotension, and possibly increased liver enzymes. And also, olanzapine may induce hyperglycemia, weight gain, and dyslipidemia. Now, Usually, olanzapine uh, is associated with low incidence of extra pyramidal side effect if it is used at a daily dose of 10 to 20 mg. But unfortunately, clinicians sometimes they use higher than this dose, and this will lead to an increase in the incidence of the extra pyramidal symptoms. Now we move next to cutiapine, which is known as Seroquel. And this drug has an excellent extra pyramidal side effect profile. The optimal daily dose of Seroquel is still unknown. And sometimes patients are treated with more than 500 milligram daily. Now, cutiapine is available as tablet or extended release tablet like Syroquil XR, and uh, it is used in the management of acute manic episodes in patients suffering from bipolar disorder. Also, cutiapine can be used to treat acute depressive episodes in patients suffering from bipolar 1 and bipolar 2 disorders. Okay, also cutiapine can be used to manage the manifestations of schizophrenia. Cutiapine also could be used as asymptomatic reliefs for major depressive disorder or depression. When the patient is not responding to the antidepressant, or if the patient is not tolerating the side effect of the antidepressants. Now, cutiapine again can be used in the management of acute manic episodes in patients suffering from bipolar disorder. Now, cutiapine tablets are used to treat bipolar mania. We start with a dose of 50 mg twice daily, and then we titrate by 100 mg daily 
till we reach the maximal dose, which is 400 mg twice daily. Now, quetiapine extended release tablet or long acting tablets can also be used to manage bipolar mania. And the regimen here is to start with the Seroquel XR 300 mg on day one. On day two, we use 600 mg. And then after that, the maintenance dose should be maximum 800 mg daily. That is after day two. Now, quetiapine tablets can also be used to manage bipolar depression. And here there is a recommended regimen. We start on day one giving the patient 50 milligram. On day two, we give 200 milligram. On day three, we increase the dose to 200 milligram. And on day four, we increase the dose to 300 milligram. And then the maintenance dose will be 600 milligram daily. Also, quetiapine tablets can be used to treat schizophrenia. I think we mentioned this before. Now, again, we come to the drug-drug interaction with the uh, enzyme inducer like carbamazepine and also with the inhibitors of cytochrome 3A4 like erythromycin and ketoconazole that could lead to increased levels of quetiapine so we have to be careful here and to adjust the dose. Again grapefruit can inhibit cytochrome P3A4 and may decrease the metabolism of quetiapine and St. John's wort may induce cytochrome P3A4 and may increase the metabolism of quetiapine. Now, the common side effect of seroquel and sedation, hypotension, increased liver enzymes, hypothyroidism, weight gain, and prolongation of the QT intervals, which could lead to heart palpitation. Now, we move next to Zebracidone or Zeldox. Uh, this drug has similar efficacy to other second-generation antipsychotics. Uh, the response rate is expected to increase when the dose is above 80 mg daily, and the increase in the body weight with Zipracidone is unlikely. Now, Zipracidone capsules are used to manage patients suffering from bipolar disorder, uh, whether they are in the acute manic episode or they have mixed episodes. Also, Zipracidone can be used to treat schizophrenia and other related psychotic disorders. Uh, Zipracidone also can be used to treat bipolar disorder at a dose of 40 to 80 mg twice daily, and we recommend the capsule to be taken with food. Okay. Also, Zibracidone uh, can be used to treat schizophrenia at a dose between 20 to 100 mg twice daily with food. Now, again, Zibracidone, like quetiapine, it may prolong the QT interval. And it's very important to check the ECG, to do an ECG before starting the treatment, we call it baseline, and then after starting or initiating the treatment, we have to monitor the ECG to make sure that there is no prolongation in the QT interval. Of course, here it is very important to avoid using uh, other medication that may prolong the QT interval, the QT interval with Zipracidone. So avoid concurrent uh, use of medication that may prolong the QT uh, interval 
and that could put the, uh, put the patient at a risk of serious heart palpitations. There are also a drug, a drug interaction with the, the inhibitors of cytochrome 3A4 like erythromycin, erythromycin or ketoconazole and we expect here increase in the level of zebracidone while carbamazepine as an enzyme inducer may decrease the level of zebracidone. Now we recommend it that zebracidone capsule to be taken with food because food increases the absorption of the uh, medication and you get a better effect. Uh, grapefruit may inhibit cytochrome P3A4 and may decrease the metabolism of zebracidone, while St. Joe's wort may induce cytochrome P3A4 leading to an increased metabolism of zebracidone. Now the side effect of zebracidone may include hypotension, hyperprolactinemia, extra pyramidal side effect and somnolence. Now let's talk about the long-acting antipsychotic injectables which are used very commonly nowadays to treat schizophrenia and other related psychotic disorders. So we have actually a Bilify IM injection. We have also in Vega IM injection and we have Risperidol uh, IM injection. So these long acting injectable drugs can be used to prevent relapses and to prolong remission and also to enhance engagement in psychosocial intervention. So the use of long-acting injectables could be associated with an improved adherence uh, and also with a regular follow-up because the patient will see the nurse uh, every month or every two weeks depending on the regimen and the healthcare provider can follow up the patient while when we give him the oral medication most patients they don't use them they use them one day they stop another day and uh, the uh, adherence is very low and while the injectable we make sure that the patient is uh, uh, being given the injection and we expect a better result than using the oral therapy. Now, the disadvantages of the long-acting in, uh, injectables is the inability to reverse the side effect once they develop. The oral, you can stop it because the patient will not take the second dose, while here when you give the injection, you cannot do anything. You have to treat the patient symptomatically now we move last to the typical and the very old antipsychotics and they call them also first generation antipsychotics uh, they are associated with high incidence of extra pyramidal side effect they are not recommended as phase line therapy uh, the efficacy does not correlate with the potency a previous patient or family response is helpful in selecting an appropriate fade generation antipsychotic and chlorpromazine or they used to call it large actyl is the standard phased generation antipsychotics now the phase generation antipsychotics include haloperidol uh, chlorpromazine and loxapine and the phase generation antipsychotics they bind the dopamine type 2 receptors to control the positive signs and they bind actually more firmly 
the D2 receptors than the dopamine and they cause full occupancy of the D D2 receptors. And again, the phage generation antipsychotics are associated with improvement in the positive signs of schizophrenia. However, they do not have uh, any effect on the serotonin uh, uh, 2A receptors and no effect on the negative symptoms. While the second generation antipsychotics, the atypical antipsychotics, they can improve both the positive and negative symptoms, while the phase generation, they only improve the positive symptoms and have no effect on the negative symptoms of schizophrenia. Uh, also, the phase generation antipsychotics, they block the uh, dopamine type 2 receptors, leading to extra pyramidal side effects like Parkinsonism, dystonia, <coughs> and tardive dyskinesia. Another problem with the phage generation antipsychotics, the elevation of the level of a prolactin in the serum. And of course, this will lead, when the prolactin level is increased, the testosterone level is decreased. So we expect that the patient will have problem in the sexual desire or libido, uh, in addition to impairment uh, in the sexual drive, uh, another side effect, gynecomasia, <coughs> sorry, a swelling of the breast or congestion of the breast. And also uh, some patient may end up with osteoporosis. So, <coughs> sorry, the bottom line of this presentation uh, pharmacists can use their knowledge and the skills to optimize pharmacotherapy for patients suffering from schizophrenia and other mental disorders. Thank you very much for listening and watching and hope to see you again. Have a wonderful day.